Introduction Welcome, medical students, to today's lecture on Chiari malformation, specifically focusing on various aspects such as diagnosis, genetics, treatment complexities, clinical characteristics, associated conditions, radiological differentiation, neurophysiological monitoring, pathophysiology controversies, psychological and social aspects, patient prognosis, and surgical outcomes. Chiari malformation is a neurological condition characterized by the descent of the cerebellar tonsils through the foramen magnum into the spinal canal, resulting in various neurological symptoms. Without further ado, let us delve into the intricacies surrounding Chiari malformation. Chiari zero malformation is a subtle variant of Chiari malformation where the descent of the cerebellar tonsils is less than 3 mm. This condition is often associated with symptoms resembling those of type 2 Chiari malformation but without significant tonsillar herniation. It is crucial to differentiate Chiari zero malformation from other posterior fossa abnormalities to ensure accurate diagnosis and appropriate management. The clinical presentation of Chiari zero malformation may include headaches, neck pain, dizziness, and upper extremity weakness. However, due to the lack of significant tonsillar herniation, the diagnosis can be challenging and often requires advanced imaging techniques, such as MRI, to evaluate the craniovertebral junction and rule out other causes of symptoms. The measurement of tonsillar descent plays a critical role in the diagnosis and classification of Chiari malformation. It provides valuable information regarding the severity of herniation and helps guide treatment decisions. Tonsillar descent is typically measured using the McRae line, which is drawn along the ventral surface of the spinal cord. The normal position of the tonsils is at or above this line. In type I Chiari malformation, the tonsils are located below the McRae line. Moreover, the degree of tonsillar herniation correlates with the severity of symptoms and the likelihood of requiring surgical intervention. However, it is important to note that measuring tonsillar descent alone is not sufficient to make a definitive diagnosis, and it should be interpreted in conjunction with clinical features and other radiological findings. Chiari malformation is believed to have a multifactorial etiology, with both genetic and environmental factors contributing to its development. Although the exact genetic mechanisms remain unclear, studies have identified several genes that may play a role in the pathogenesis of Chiari malformation. These genes are involved in the development of the craniovertebral junction and neural tube closure. Additionally, familial cases of Chiari malformation have been reported, suggesting a genetic predisposition. However, more research is needed to fully understand the genetic basis of Chiari malformation and its implications for clinical practice. Type 2 Chiari malformation, also known as Arnold Chiari malformation, is frequently associated with myelomeningocele, a neural tube defect. Consequently, the surgical management of type 2 Chiari malformation is particularly challenging due to the presence of multiple abnormalities and the need for multidisciplinary collaboration. The primary goal of surgery is to relieve brainstem compression and restore normal cerebrospinal fluid flow. However, the presence of associated conditions, such as hydrocephalus and tethered spinal cord, requires careful consideration and often necessitates a staged approach. Moreover, the delicate anatomy and potential for complications, including CSF leakage and neurological deficits, require the involvement of experienced neurosurgeons and meticulous preoperative planning. While Chiari malformation is commonly diagnosed in childhood, it can also present in adulthood. Adult onset Chiari malformation often manifests with different clinical characteristics compared to pediatric cases. Symptoms may include suboccipital headaches, neck pain, cranial nerve dysfunction, and cervical myelopathy. Additionally, the prognosis and treatment outcomes in adult patients with Chiari malformation may differ from those in pediatric patients. Long-term follow-up studies have shown that surgical intervention can provide symptomatic relief in many adult cases, although the magnitude of symptom improvement may vary depending on the severity of tonsillar descent and the presence of associated conditions. Syringomyelia is a common coexisting condition in patients with Chiari malformation. It is characterized by the formation of a fluid-filled cavity within the spinal cord. The treatment of syringomyelia in conjunction with Chiari malformation typically involves surgical decompression to relieve the obstruction of cerebrospinal fluid flow and drainage of the syrinx. The surgical approach may vary depending on the location and extent of the syrinx, as well as the presence of associated abnormalities. The goals of syringomyelia management include halting progression, relieving symptoms, and preventing neurological deterioration. Regular follow-up and imaging are necessary to monitor the progression of the syrinx and assess the need for further interventions. Accurate radiological differentiation between Chiari malformation and other posterior fossa abnormalities is crucial for appropriate management. Magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, is the gold standard for diagnosing Chiari malformation and evaluating its associated features. 
MRI allows visualization of tonsillar descent, cerebellar morphology, and the presence of associated abnormalities such as syringomyelia or hydrocephalus. Radiological characteristics, such as tonsillar herniation, cerebellar morphology, for example, scalloping, and Searing's dimensions, aid in distinguishing Chiari malformation from other conditions, including basilar invagination, craniocervical instability, and posterior fossa tumors. Additionally, advanced imaging techniques, such as CINE MRI and phase contrast imaging, can further assess cerebrospinal fluid dynamics and guide surgical decision-making. Craniosynostosis is a condition characterized by the premature fusion of one or more cranial sutures. It can lead to abnormal skull growth and shape, potentially causing constriction of the posterior cranial fossa. This constriction can result in Chiari malformation, which may require surgical intervention to alleviate symptoms and prevent neurological complications. The diagnosis of Chiari malformation should be considered in patients with craniosynostosis, particularly if they present with signs or symptoms suggestive of Chiari-related pathology. Timely recognition and management of this comorbidity are crucial in optimizing outcomes and preventing long-term sequelae. Neurophysiological monitoring plays a pivotal role during surgical interventions for Chiari malformation, especially in complex cases or those involving brainstem manipulation. Intraoperative monitoring techniques aim to assess the integrity of the neural pathways and avoid iatrogenic damage. Commonly employed modalities include somatosensory evoked potentials, SEPs, motor evoked potentials, MEPs, electromyography, EMG, and brainstem auditory evoked potentials, BEPs. These monitoring tools enable real-time assessment of neural function and aid in guiding surgical decision-making. Early detection of changes in neurophysiological parameters provides an opportunity for prompt intervention to minimize the risk of permanent neurological deficits. The exact pathophysiological mechanisms underlying Chiari malformation remain a subject of debate and investigation. Although hind brain herniation is well established, the primary causes and contributing factors are still unclear. Multiple theories have been proposed, including the presence of small posterior fossa volume, abnormal intrauterine cerebrospinal fluid dynamics, developmental abnormalities, and genetic predisposition. However, none of these theories fully explain all aspects of Chiari malformation development. Advancements in research techniques, such as imaging, genetics, and biomechanical modeling, continue to shed light on the complex pathophysiology, but more studies are needed to unravel its intricacies fully. Living with Chiari malformation can have a significant impact on individuals' psychological and social well-being. The presence of chronic pain, neurological symptoms, and physical limitations may lead to emotional distress, anxiety, depression, and decreased quality of life. Furthermore, the challenges associated with diagnosis, treatment decisions, and long-term management can be overwhelming for patients and their families. Therefore, it is crucial for healthcare professionals to consider the psychological and social aspects of Chiari malformation and provide comprehensive support, including access to counseling, support groups, and educational resources, to help patients cope with the emotional and social challenges they may encounter. Predicting patient prognosis and surgical outcomes in Chiari malformation can be challenging due to the heterogeneity of the condition and the interplay between various factors. Factors that may influence prognosis and outcomes include the severity of tonsillar herniation, the presence of associated conditions, for example, syringomyelia, hydrocephalus, the timing of intervention, the surgical technique used, and individual patient characteristics. Long-term follow-up studies have shown that surgical intervention can provide symptomatic relief in the majority of cases, but the degree of improvement and the occurrence of postoperative complications may vary. Tailoring treatment strategies to each patient's specific needs and considering multidisciplinary collaboration can optimize outcomes and improve patient prognosis. In conclusion, Chiari malformation is a complex neurological condition that requires a thorough understanding of its various aspects for accurate diagnosis and appropriate management. From the subtle presentation of Chiari zero malformation to the intricacies of surgical complexities and associated conditions like syringomyelia, this lecture has aimed to provide you with a comprehensive overview. We have explored the role of genetics, radiological differentiation, neurophysiological monitoring, controversies in pathophysiology, and the psychological and social impact of Chiari malformation. Furthermore, we discuss the importance of predicting patient prognosis and surgical outcomes to tailor treatment strategies effectively. Through further research and collaboration, we can continue to refine our understanding and approaches to tackle the challenges posed by Chiari malformation. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you found this lecture informative and helpful.